reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we have for you, so as to strengthen your hearts, to be blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his holy ones. Amen. Finally, brothers and sisters, we earnestly ask and exhort you in the Lord Jesus that, as you received from us how you should conduct yourselves to please God, and as you are conducting yourselves, you do so even more. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. The Word of the Lord. Our second reading on this first Sunday of Advent comes from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. We have been trying to uh, reflect on the true spirit of Advent. In the first reading, it is joy. It is hopeful anticipation because God will fulfill His promise. He will come to save us. He will restore our lives to justice and He will make us experience security safety in him because someone, a ruler from David's house will be born. This, the first reading, brings to our attention and uh, we are brought to the first coming of the Son of God. Now in the second reading, it is more clearly oriented towards the second coming of Jesus as the supreme Lord, as the supreme judge. But this also, the second reading, also alerts us to His coming to us in daily life. Now, we emphasize joy and hope in welcoming salvation from God in the first reading. Now, in the second reading, we are asked to prepare. Now, we have to do our share. God will fulfill His promise. He will save us. Now, how do we respond to that, that, to that gift of God? How will we welcome more worthily, adequately, the fulfillment of God's promise? In the second reading, we are first consoled by St. Paul by saying that God will help us prepare ourselves. Look at how good God is. Huh? Even in our preparation to welcome His salvation, He will help us. How? By increasing love in us. Increasing our capacity to love. My dear brothers and sisters, one way to prepare for the coming of the Lord is to increase our capacity to love. If in the past you count the cost of loving, if you choose whom to love, now let us accompany God who saves everyone who desires to save everyone. Like God, let us increase our capacity to love. Another thing, God will help us to be blameless. Blameless. He will strengthen our hearts so that we could be blameless and holy before God. Okay. God will help us to be holy. Oh, huh, what are we doing with that help? that grace from God, the strength that will enable us to be blameless before God. Many of us ignore that gift. We would rather be careless, we would rather be adventuristic, rather than holy and blameless before God. Okay? This is another way of preparing for the coming salvation. And finally, St. Paul says, we need to make Progress, progress in virtue. Okay, dear brothers and sisters, God will come to save us. God is faithful. God will be true to His promise. And God will help us prepare ourselves to meet His salvation. And those are the three that St. Paul offers to us. Increase your love. Strengthen your hearts to be blameless and holy. And make progress. So, Advent is a season given to us by the church to relish God's action in us, 
so that we can be less unworthy to welcome Jesus the Savior. May He find us loving. May He find us holy. And may He find us really progressing in virtue. In this day and age, social networking has become a very convenient mode of communication among people. With just a click and the power of the internet, you are able to reach your loved ones wherever they are. On the other hand, it is saddening and alarming to know that there are some people who take advantage of the reach and availability of social networking sites spreading scandals and false information about a certain entity or personality, engaging in fraud and scams, and at times pretending to be someone else. Recently, I have been getting reports that there are fan pages and personal accounts under my name and are circulating over Facebook. To set the record straight, I have no personal Facebook account. Rather, I have only one Facebook page, and it is being maintained by Jesuit Communications. I seek your help in reporting fraudulent pages and accounts, not only those concerned with myself, but also with other people and entities. Let us keep the social networking world a good communication venue by being truthful.